Today, I want to look at a common contradiction that is all throughout the Gospels. I mean, this isn't just one thing. This is really all over the place. And when people see them, they assume it's a contradiction. And it's not. There is no. There's no easy answer for this. So this is going to be something that we talk about, and that's just how it's going to go. Uh, first off, before I even before I even talk about this idea, um, it, it, there are some people who are just hell bent into believing that there are contradictions in the Bible, and they won't try to understand. They will try to argue, and they go from YouTube video to YouTube video just trying to argue with people. I don't have time for that kind of nonsense. Um, it, it's kind of it's kind of just a point of being close minded. Close minded. Um, you can see. You can only see that which you have chosen to see. It's just a fact of life. Um, that's we program our brains how to think, and then they do that. Um, this video is not for them. Uh, I'm not going to be arguing back and forth in what I see as a pointless discussion. Um, I'm trying to help those people who are looking for answers, but I do have to once again give a little disclaimer. I see a lot of people going onto YouTube channels and stuff and asking questions instead of looking for themselves. I am not a um, alternative to using your brain, and I am not an ultimate authority. I can be wrong. Um, how I see this might change in the future, or it might not even be correct now. So, with that disclaimer, I do advise you to study for yourself and think for yourself. And, uh, okay. So, the common contradiction, okay? Mm -hmm. Variations. There are variations uh, in the Gospels, even when they're talking about the same thing happening. And so the question then being, is this a contradiction? Um, and if it is, how do we deal with that? Um, the Gospels are not exactly the same. They do have differences. And so, like I said, this is not something that appears in one verse. It, it's all throughout the Gospels. Um, really, it's all throughout all four of them. Things that, that's not exactly how the other one said that it happened. So let's look at it. Um, first off, sometimes different things in the Gospels will be put in a different order. Okay, so we're, we're talking about variations in, that, that, are, that are within the Gospels and how people think that this is a contradiction. The first aspect of those variations is things not in the same order. Okay, so they'll in one gospel Jesus said this over here, and another one he said it over there. Um, in one he did it over here, and another he did it over there. It, the order has been moved, and I just want to point out that moving events from chronological order to a different order isn't a contradiction. Sometimes people call something a contradiction, what they mean is a difference. So that might seem like a minor point, but it actually is kind of a big point. Just because there's a difference doesn't make it a contradiction, okay? It's a way of making a statement or helping the hearers to learn, or the readers, however you want to say that, for them to learn, saying it in a way that they'll understand. Sometimes things will seem like a contradiction because that's not how we would have done it. That's not how we think nowadays. That's not how we write nowadays. Um, you know, maybe we consult uh, audio recordings. They did not have audio recordings. So, <sighs> can we hold the writings of the gospel to the standard of modern writings? No. If we don't, does that mean make them dishonest or contradictory? No. So let's kind of keep those things in perspective here. Um, so what is a contradiction? A, a contradiction is two opposite claims. Now, obviously, somebody could say something like this. Well, this gospel claims that he said it here, and that gospel claimed that he said it over there. <laughs> yes, that is true, but there's a few things. First off, he could have said it twice. I don't really find that likely, but it could have happened. But then also, the gospel didn't claim, the four gospels never claim that they say the things in chronological order every single time. Okay? 
maybe their point wasn't even to say it in chronological order. Maybe they just wanted to organize the things that Jesus said and did in a way that people would understand and uh, be able to learn from. See what I mean? Maybe their purposes were more theological than historical. Am I saying that they weren't historical? No, I'm not saying that at all. But you can't go to one of the Gospels and say, well, this one said this. Okay, did it ever stop in the middle of the story and say, now, I am writing in historical, chronological order, and this is the exact wording that he used. No, they, they didn't say that. They captured what was said and what was done without having to be that modern standard now you might say you're just trying to you're just trying to excuse it and I do have to admit yes I am trying to excuse the contradictions for a large part because I believe the Bible and so obviously I have that leaning to defend it but with that being said I don't think that I've clouded my judgment on this one because this is just an element of historical writing the more modern histories are going to be a lot more precise we have things like the scientific enlightenment that's happened and has caused people to think and process information a lot differently um, back then they wouldn't even thought twice about these variations that exist within the bible because it it, they're not contradictions. They're not saying two exclusively different things. Jesus was a man and Jesus was a woman. You know, it doesn't say that. It doesn't say Jesus um, said that he was God and Jesus said that he was not God. It, it, it doesn't say that. So, I mean, those are contradictions. What, we're, what we have here is a, a variation, and a variation is not a contradiction. A variation is just things worded differently. If I, me and my wife, see an accident... We're going to describe that accident to the police officer. We might say it in a different order. We might um, say what was said slightly different. Are we lying? No. Are we contradicting each other? No. We are relaying the information that actually did happen, and the gist of what was said, nothing was lost or taken away or added to. It's still the same concept. See what I mean? And so sometimes we go to the Bible with this hyper expectation that doesn't actually exist in humanity right so something like this it has to be so perfect that it was as if the same person wrote all of them that's an unrealistic expectation you can't have four different people write four different accounts of jesus life and ministry and, and teachings and then say they all have to be written by the same person. That, that, that's an impossibility. That's an expectation that cannot act, accurately be met. Having variations is a part of human nature. It's a part of human life. If you plant two peach trees of the exact same breed of peach, they're both going to grow up to be that peach tree that you planted. But they will look different. They'll both be the same, but they will look different. So, I mean... Are any of these variations contradictory? Both this breed of peach tree and not this breed of peach tree? And the answer is no. And I understand why this is a why people say that this is a contradiction all the time, because at first glance it really does appear to be a contradiction, but it's actually a variation. Those things are are, are, are not the same. So let's keep going through this and I hope to kind of explain more of what I mean. Um, oftentimes, because if you say it too quickly, people will say, well, you didn't explain your view good enough. It wasn't very clear. And then if you talk for too long, people will say, well, you just kind of droned on. It's like, oh my gosh. So let's see what we can get to here. Um, so some things seem like a contradiction because they... Um, Oh, I see what I'm saying. I, I'm reading my notes, and I, I worded this note really weird. Some things seem like a contradiction because they are but are not. Okay, like, let me give you an example. Christians, right? We say that we are, are saved, but then we also say that we are awaiting salvation. Now, obviously, you could say, I know I'm going to heaven, but I'm in a problem, and I'm waiting to be saved from this problem, and that's true. But also, theologically, Christians mean it in another sense. I'm saved, I'm a Christian. But I'm not, I don't have the resurrected body yet. So I, I already am, I'm already, but not yet. That seems like a contradiction. How can you be saved and not saved? 
once again, this is this is kind of a problem that resolves itself the more you study. So I'm not really going to go too much into it. It's already talked about in a lot of theology books. People who said it a lot better than me. So why waste your time with it? Um, but with that being said, so some things seem like a contra contradiction, but really aren't. Um, in one way, we are already saved. In another, we are awaiting salvation. And in yet another way, we are confident of our salvation that is coming. So we say it as though it already did happen. See what I mean? So there's a lot of different ways you can take it. And that kind of brings me to a big point that I want to highlight um, for ancient times, okay? They had different rhetorical devices than we do now. They wrote differently, and they they just had a different way of going about it than we do now. Human nature stays the same. Okay, all right, that's fine. I'm not even trying to argue that. But how humans interact with things changes. Um, in the future, for instance, it might seem silly to be so precise and scientific with everything. Who knows? I mean, it kind of goes against the very nature, uh, the very character of nature, but I mean, take that however you want it to be. Um, I mean, think about how we categorize different animals and stuff, right? But then there's always some animals that don't quite fit into the category that we want it to fit in, you know, and so it's like, ah. So, like, for instance, um, well, I, I don't want to get sidetracked, but you would think that everything that's in the in the water is a fish, but then you have some mammals that are in the water, and it's like, what's going on here? Um, and that's kind of what I'm talking about, things that don't really fit as precise as we would like them to fit. Um, okay. So they had different rhetorical devices than we do now. They aren't modern writers. You can't hold ancient writers to modern writers. You, you can't do that. They had a different way. And once again, when they were writing the Gospels, they didn't have access to you know, YouTube where they could just look it up. They didn't have access to um, audio recordings. Does that mean it's not reliable? No, I'm, I'm not saying that it wasn't reliable. That's not what I'm saying at all. But I am saying that there's going to be some variation, not only because different people write differently, but also because information is, isn't always relayed in the exact same way. I, do this, okay? Tell somebody a story, and then tell that same story again, and then tell that same story again. Find out if you have told the same story, same things happen in the story, but... Then find out if you said it in the same way, and you're going to find out, no, you didn't say it in the same way. So and that's kind of a good example of what I'm trying to get across here. Um, so, okay, one, one example that I want to look at, and we're going to look at two more specific examples, but the first one is Matthew 21. Jesus is telling this parable about um, this, this guy who gets these people to take care of his land, and so then he sends people to them, and, and they... They beat them, and they send them away or whatever. So finally he says, okay, I'm going to send my son. And they're like, hey, let's kill this guy. So they kill him. And then at the end of the story, Jesus says this. What will the owner of that piece of land do? It's a vineyard in the parable, but same idea. What will the owner of the vineyard do? Now, in two of the Gospels, Jesus answers the question, and in one of the Gospels, the people who are listening answer the question. So which was it? This seems like a contradiction, right? Because either Jesus said it or they said it. Well, there's a lot of different things that we could say. First off, so hold on. Did they answer Jesus or did Jesus say it? Okay, all right. So either this... Um, so either this exact conversation was repeated multiple times with different outcomes. That's unlikely, but possible. I mean, yeah, I guess it is possible, but I find that very unlikely. It's possible, though. Um, or maybe Jesus agreed with them, so it's like he said it. Maybe. Or the story wasn't accurately remembered. This is the easiest answer, but hard to believe in light of how many other accounts that there were and how early um, this this was written after Jesus' death, especially because the gospel that claims that the only gospel that claims that they answer Jesus instead of Jesus saying it is Matthew, which supposedly used Mark as a source. So you're saying that it was corrupted sometime between its source and being written? How is that even possible? 
And then there's maybe another option. Maybe uh, the text was just corrupted, you know. Um, so it was written here, and then somewhere along the process of being copied, it was corrupted. Once again, possible, but I don't think any of those answers are the correct answer. But before we look at what answer I think is the correct answer, let's just point this out. Is it a contradiction? Well, not really. Regardless of who said it, it was correct, and the meaning of the whole thing has not changed. So it's not really a contradiction. He didn't say, th this constable didn't say, this is what was said, and then the other one said, that never happened. S you see what I mean? Now, so obviously you're, you're, you're noticing a little bit of a problem. If that's your standard for contradiction, then it seems like nothing's a contradiction. And I totally understand what you're, what you're saying. But there is still a standard of contradiction. For instance, if you read the Gnostic Gospels and compare them to the Gospels, Okay, now we have a little more of a contradiction. Jesus is more of a madman and then the Gnostic Gospels, so, I mean, okay. Um, either way, it, the, the character of Jesus seems to be the same, um, even when different aspects of that are highlighted. The story is the same. The response is the same, regardless of whether he said it or they said it. It's still the same response with the same follow-up about the cornerstone. I mean, it's, it, it's all the same. Um, so it's not really a contradiction, uh, but then you could still say yes, but either he said it or they said it. Well, yeah, I'll give you that. So it's also possible that Jesus said it at the same time as them, which I highly don't think that that's very very likely. I, I really don't don't think that that happened. Whether they're, they're both reading each other's lips and saying it at the same time, I, no, no. Um, but I want to show you how many different possibilities there are before we simply say contradiction. See, the problem is a lot of times we go to a thing and we don't understand it, and so we say contradiction. And most of life isn't that cut and dry. It's not that black and white, most of life. Um, I know we all like to walk around in bubbles like we're right about everything and everybody else is always wrong about everything, but that's not really how the world works. So, okay, so we've got this. And I want to point out that in the response, which is in verse 41, it says, in Matthew, the only gospel that says that they answered him, it says, they said to him, he will put those wretches to a miserable death and let out the venue to other tenants who will give him the fruits of their seasons. In both Mark and Luke, it says the exact same thing. Jesus is the one talking, and he says he will come and destroy the tenants and give the vineyard to others. Do you see how much more short and concise I think that Matthew has taken this and expanded it to be more condemning and then applied it to them. And I think that he did this for a very specific reason. Okay, so follow along with me. I think that they were with Jesus up to this point. They were following along with the story and they were like, I can't believe that he did that. Yes, I bet you that they, you know, and so I think that Matthew said it and said that they said something in such a way that it was more condemning to them because they were condemning themselves. And I think that his point in this is just showing that they were agreeing with Jesus. Mark and Luke don't show that they were agreeing with Jesus. Um, they don't get mad till the end of the story in, in Mark and Luke. But Matthew is the only one that shows them following along with the story and going, I can't believe that that just happened. This is such a frustrating story. They got what was coming to them. You know what I mean? Especially because Matthew had more of a Jewish audience and they have this kind of condemning of everybody else attitude. And so it, Matthew was probably trying to say it in such a way where the Jews would be like, holy smokes, this causes more reflection rather than condemning everybody else. I had just condemned myself. And um, I think that's, you know, I think Matthew here is not trying to be precise. I think he's trying to sh help the audience that he's writing to to learn in the same way that the Pharisees did then. And I think he's trying to do it in such a way that they would understand and connect with. I think that's what he's trying to do. He's just trying to connect with his audience. Do I really think that they answered him? In a way. I think that maybe they were nodding when he said, it, like, yeah, yeah. Um, and so they were agreeing with him, so in a way they were kind of saying it. Or maybe this. Maybe Jesus said, here's another example. So this is like the sixth or seventh example of how we can make it where it's not really a contradiction. Um, it says here, he will come and destroy the tents and give the vineyard to others. Maybe that's what Jesus said, and at the same time, they were commenting. Yeah, yeah, he will put those wretches to a miserable death. Let out the vineyard to, uh, to other tenants. 
you know, I, you can kind of see her maybe them talking back, but then maybe one other one says, yeah, and the fruit's in their season. You know what I mean? And, and you can, maybe that's a possibility there was some more talking back and forth. But have you ever tried to write dialogue where people were, where multiple people were talking at once? It gets very tricky. So one way you could do that is just exclude it, as Mar Mark and Luke did, and say, hey, um, Jesus said this. Or you could do like Matthew said and have where Jesus asked a question and they answered. Neither of these are really wrong. They're just trying to highlight a different part of the conversation. So I've shown you all kinds of different ways that this could work out where it's not a contradiction. Um, but here, so here, let me go a little bit more on this, okay? Um, where am I on my notes? Hold on just a minute. So they were with they were with Jesus up to this point, and I think that's the point that Matthew is trying to trying to make. But when they realized he was talking against them, in all three store in all three accounts, they got mad and wanted to get him arrested. When they wanted to kill him, they just they're they're, they're just outright furious about this. And so maybe they didn't literally say that, but they were agreeing with him as he said it. That's the kind of the view that I think, but if I'm wrong on that, my second guess would be that he was saying the part that Mark and Luke say, he will come and destroy the tenants, and they were commenting while he was saying it like this. Yeah, you put those wretches to miserable death. Yeah, yeah, you know, see what I mean? We're kind of the crowd getting into the story. That's, those are my, my, that's my take on the two most likely solutions. Neither of which required for it to be a contradiction. And what, I, what I'm saying is this. You don't always have to hop to the conclusion that it's a contradiction. There is such a way that you can read a story, appreciate it, learn from it, and realize that different people write differently. That's okay. Um, if C.S. Lewis wrote Lord of the Rings and J.R.R. Tolkien wrote Chronicles of Narnia, they would have told the same story, but they would have highlighted different things. Another good example, um, the newer Dune books, not the original Dune books, but the, the newer Dune books, oh, lost my place here. The newer Dune books are written by two people. They're written by Frank Herbert's son, Brian Herbert, Herbert and Kevin J. Anderson. They're writing together. Now, let's say they wrote it together, and I, and I went to them, and I said, okay, Brian, you go rewrite it again over there by yourself, Kevin. You go over there and rewrite the story that you got. You both just wrote together by yourself. And you're going to see what happens where two people writing the same story that they even originally wrote together, they're going to highlight different things. Those are variations. The story is the same, and once again, they're not contradictory. They're varying. So, um, some people say, well, yeah, but it's proof that it didn't really happen because they're not precisely on point with every single detail. I strongly disagree. I think because there are variations, it's more proof that the stories actually did happen because you can see them trying to tell the same story. If there was no story, it'd be very difficult for them to. You can see that the writers were also very close with Jesus there's just a lot of different things that don't fit if you try and just say Jesus wasn't really a person or they were just like they were just like making up the story or whatever. Yeah, and then they died for something that they knew was 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 a lie. I mean, that just doesn't seem very likely, but whatever. Um, so with all this being said, um, possibly Matthew changed the speaker to show that they were agreeing with Jesus here, and that's that's what I believe was happening, or they were commenting while Jesus was talking. Either of those. Um, maybe the others took, um, maybe Mark and Luke both removed from the story that others were responding for some reason. Maybe they were trying to prove a, prove a point or something that I'm just not getting. That's possible. But Luke and Mark are exactly the same. If you look at this, he will come and destroy the tenants. He will come and destroy the tenants. That's Mark and Luke both precise and give the vineyard to others and give the vineyard to others exactly the same word for word i find it very unlikely that mark and luke are the ones that have been changed i i think it was matthew and i think that it was done on purpose um i don't think it was a corruption of the text i think it was a, a an intentional changing of the text and i i think the reason why that is 
once again, I don't think that they were so concerned about getting word for word everything that Jesus said so much as preserving what, the conversations, the atmosphere of what was being said. And I think I don't think that they lied about what Jesus said or that they changed what Jesus said so much as they <sighs> reworded it in some ways. Um, and you might say, well, what do you mean? Well, read how Jesus talks in the Gospel of John, and then read how Jesus talks in the Gospel of Matthew. You're going to see that those two, they just don't talk the same. They sound like two different people. Why? Because John is putting it in his words. Matthew is putting it in his words. It's not that they're contradictory. They both show a different picture of Jesus, but the same Jesus. And there's lots of different books that talk about this to great extent, so I don't think I really need to. One of the books is um, Can We Trust the Gospels by Mark Roberts, I believe. Anyways, either way, um, I don't think that having that variation is a contradiction or a lie. I think that having that variation is proof that there were different writers describing the same events. I'm trying to say things in such a way where you get what I'm trying to say up here. And sometimes it sounds like I'm contradicting myself. <laughs> so for that, I am sorry. I, I am trying to be clear. Um, I am. I hope that that's how it's coming across. Um, okay, so let's see. Where did that leave us off? Um, I mentioned that. Yeah, I think Matthew changed it. Um, for the reasons that I said, especially since Matthew's a lot more harsh in the response than Jesus was in Mark and Luke, um, I think that you know trying to show that element of, of you know self righteousness and whatnot, um, like almost trying to get the reader or purer, um, you know, caught up in the emotion that was going on at the time. And uh, I mean, how many times do we do that? Oh man, I I don't like I love everybody. I'm not like that person. Oh, they they getting what they deserve. Man, to hell with them. And it's like, well, okay, all right. Um, I feel like there's something else I was gonna say here. Let me see. Especially since it's so expanded, it really just sticks out to me. But anyways, um, and I want to point this out. Yeah, so I didn't. Okay, I already said that. Um, I want to point this out. The four Gospels are definitely not written in the exact same manner, in the exact same way. But there is much more agreement than disagreement between the Gospels and the stories. Much more agreement. And not only there's much more agreement, but there's nothing in the Gospels that really says, well, that's just wrong. This one clearly said this, and that one clearly said that. Um, you know, you point out everybody was pointing out the, the the few little things that are varying, not 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 really an inconsistency, or you know, well, I guess you could call it an inconsistency, but things that are just slightly worded differently, and not realizing that the whole is like the exact same. Um, another example um, of this contradiction of variation in a story um, is that there are, in some stories, there's slightly different details. That's not a contradiction. Those are just different ways of saying it, I guess. Let me kind of show you uh, show you what I'm trying to say. In Matthew 9, somewhere, uh, there's a story about a paralytic that is um, lowered down into... Uh, into a house so Jesus can heal him. Um, that's the story, okay? The paralytic comes by his, and is brought by his friends. He's healed. They carry him off. Um, or he walks off. Excuse me. So that's the story, okay? Matthew doesn't mention the roof. He, he doesn't say anything about the roof. He doesn't say that he wasn't lowered through a roof, but he says that... They brought him a paralytic lying on a bed. Jesus saw their faith. He said to the paralytic, Take heart, my son, your sins are forgiven. So Matthew doesn't even mention the roof. It's To him, it's like, who cares? 
Mark mentions removing the roof. Okay, doesn't say anything about tiles, just says removing the roof. And Luke mentions that they lowered him through the tiles. So which of that's true, a roof or tiles? You know, it, it can't be both. And here's the thing. I don't know how they built roofs back then. Were the tiles over the roof? I, I don't know. Or is he using a term that his audience would understand better? So it, it wasn't as historically accurate, but it was something that they would understand. Let's say that you live someplace that they don't use shingles, roofing shingles, you know, the, okay? Let's say you use straw, okay? And I'm writing you a story, and I say, and he removed the shingles, and you're like, the what? Would I, would it be better if I just said, and they removed the grass from, from the roof and lowered them in? Well, which one would be better? Well, if I'm trying to be completely historically accurate, I would use the first option. That's usually how people nowadays write. If I was trying to write in such a way that my audience would understand without having to stop every five seconds and give an explanation on something that they don't get, I would just say he, they took off the grass and lowered it to the roof. The, the story is the same. There's a roof on a building. That... Like that doesn't have to be complicated. That doesn't have to be a contradiction or a lie or a falsehood. It's it's not it, it's not that. So does is the only way to mention something the absolute literal literal historical accurate chronological way? Is that the only way to to, to tell a story? No. And if you don't follow the, those ways, does that make it a lie? No. Does it make it a contradiction? No. It makes it a variation. He was lowered through the roof regardless of what it was made out of. And let's follow that up with a little bit of a point that I want to make. Do those precise details matter? Does it matter whether it was tile or roof, whatever the roof was made out of? Does that matter at all? Not for the point that the writers are trying to get across. If I'm trying to tell a story about the savior of the world, I'm going to try everything I can to make it where you can understand what's going on. And I'm going to include only the details that I think are going to help you learn. I'm not going to throw in every single detail, and there's some things I'm going to exempt because they're not really relevant. I'm not trying to write a complete 100% accurate record, which brings me to yet another point I want to make. The historical records that we read today that are as precise as humanly possible are still incomplete. Does their incompleteness make them unreliable? No. Two modern historians can write about the same event differently. They can include different details and neither of them be 100% the complete picture. Okay, so I'm reading this book on World War II. He's telling me what's happening, but he didn't tell me what was happening in Africa. There was a tribal person who lived there, and he didn't tell me what, what was on that guy's mind at that exact moment. See what I mean? Or what about in the other side of the galaxy? There's there's an alien race, and this this record of World War II didn't say anything about that alien over. The Everything, even as precise as we've gotten it, is not 100% pure. Everything that happened, everything that happened, exhaustive. They all have holes in them. They all have variations. These are things that happen. When we go to the Bible for whatever, we, we look for any reason to say that the Bible is not true. So we don't have to change our lives. It's a very uncomfortable, uncomfortable book. It's a book that we read and we think, I don't want this to be right. I don't want there to be consequences for how I'm living. I want to do whatever the heck I want to do. And that's funner. So let's, let's look at this, okay? He was lowered through the roof regardless. Those precise matters, uh, those precise details don't really matter. And even as precise as you can, you still are going to be missing some details. It won't be a complete picture. So, moral of the story being here that the Gospels are truthful and that they are honest, even if they're worded slightly different from one another. The same thing happened in the story, whether he called him, it, it says here, in one of them he says, my son, your sins are forgiven, and in Luke he says, man, your sins are forgiven. Regardless, the same thing happened in the story, whether he, whether Jesus called him my son or man. 
same thing happened. Had Jesus ever called somebody my son? Well, yes. Had he ever called someone man? Yes. When I'm telling this story, does it matter which one he told, which one he called this specific individual? Not really. I'm not going to court presenting this, representing this guy in, in, in court and trying to get an exact word for word, you know, thing of what happened. So, but that you just said that the gospels aren't, aren't reliable. No, that's not what I said. I said variation doesn't mean that it's not reliable. Those are completely different things. Don't twist what I'm trying to say in explaining a historical document to then say you're just you're just proving your point. No, you want to see a contradiction, so everything that I say you're twisting. Like I said, I really don't have time to waste for that kind of nonsense. Um, the dialogue is slightly different in these two stories, but they're not contradictory. He never said that this and exactly this is what happened and only this and you know any other detail that's ever mentioned is false. They didn't think and operate like we do. That's just a fact of life. There's no contradiction here, just, just minor variations that don't change anything. Variations of a story may point more strongly to the truthfulness of a story, and I already mentioned that. The Gospels, with all that being said, let's just say this. The Gospels are not clones of each other. In fact, there was a person in church history that said, I'm going to take these four stories and make one cohesive book. And it was actually rejected by the church. They saw the difference. They saw the variations. They didn't think it was a contradiction. They thought that it was important to keep them separate. The Gospels are not clones of each other. They often highlight a different piece of the whole. I already told you, told you the example of four different people giving... Um, a view of something that doesn't mean that it's wrong. Like an another thing that people make not true is um, at the end where Jesus, um, where Jesus has resurrected from the dead. Who is the first to be at the um, at the tomb? And I think Craig Blomberg does a great job of this, so I'm just going to roughly mention it. Um, he said in his book, uh, I believe it was Jesus in the Gospels, if I remember correctly. Uh, once again, by Craig Blomberg. Um, I actually have it right here. I can show it to you. This book. In this book right here, he says, he makes the argument of, he's telling it, and he says, okay, so is it possible that these women were going, okay, and then one of them went ahead of the other one and talked See what I mean? Before the other one, before the other woman got there, and the truth is, yes, that that could have happened. And he gives more, he goes more into it. I don't want to, you know, I don't want to look up the book. I mean, you, if you're making such such extreme claims as Jesus is the Christ or Jesus is not the Christ, you need to make sure that you are really researching that because it's kind of a big deal. Um, we're talking about life or death this is kind of a big deal so um you can read that up for yourself but he shows about how it seems like there's a contradiction in who was at the tomb at, the, at that morning and there really isn't it's just who was there at different times and who that author is trying to highlight one of them was trying to highlight the way that all of the women went one one is only uh bringing out the one that was that got there first or was doing the main the most of the talking and so on and so forth see we think that there's a contradiction because they're, they're all highlighting a different aspect, but there's not really a contradiction. It's a variation highlighting different things. So, I hope that this is making sense to you. The Gospels are not clones. They highlight different di different piece of the whole. They were written by different people, different people with different personalities, different people with different personalities at different times. They accurately portray what happened without being able to offer the precision possible with recording devices. Also, they don't try. Also, they don't want to try. Also, they don't want to give every detail. They want to give relevant details. Also, they don't, don't want to just give relevant details. They want to give details um, about one thing. So, for instance, when one of the Gospels says, this woman was at the tomb, it doesn't say this woman and only this woman and no other woman ever were at the tomb. It just says this woman was at the tomb. Um, on another one, it says, that, well, were, were there two angels or just one? In the one, it said that there was an angel. It doesn't say that there was only an angel and that there were no other angels, just that one. See what I mean? Not really a contradiction. Again, a point of people seeing a contradiction where there isn't. So, the main point of this entire video, let me just summarize in case we lost the forest of the trees. 
having a variation in the in the Gospels is not a contradiction. It's all throughout the Gospels. So if you're looking for there to be variations, there are. That doesn't make there that doesn't make it a contradiction. Um, and my main points there were sometimes events are moved into different places because it not being chronological doesn't mean that it's a contradiction. And then my other point was um, giving de giving different details doesn't make it a contradiction. So, I hope this was helpful. Um, if you are one of those people who just go around disliking videos, and if you like, if you're one of those people who just go watching videos to argue, I'm not gonna take the bait. So.